Okay, I'm going to come right out and address it. For all the silly stuff that I'm into, I've just never been an April Fool's Day fan. Indeed, if you're some sort of completely insane archive super fan, you may or may not have noticed that I have always remained completely publicly silent on April Fool's Day. Well, I'm here to tell you, I think it's a rather overrated horror flick. So uh, with that load off my mind, in the nine Aprils now that I've been making Archive, it's just somehow worked out by some great cosmic fluke that April 1st has never fallen on an Archive day. And this particular week would normally be a Ben's junk kind of week. But that seems kind of tone deaf on my part, you know, just to keep things business as usual. And I mean, yeah, I could have come up with some lame half-assed prank, some little two-minute thing, but uh, honestly, I'm just not that good a prankster. So what I want to do today is take the opportunity to take a look at a couple of audio cassettes that I've had kicking around for some time now. And these are of some old telephone answering machine greetings. And so really, this is nothing new in archive land. Uh, actually, I think this is going to be the third time we've covered these now. But anyway, back on the Random Audio Cassettes Volume 2 episode back in 2018, we covered two tapes from the Phonies series. And in case you're not familiar, that's a double meaning, so uh, celebrity impressions for your telephone answering machine. And it, I've got... Two more of them for you now. So uh, this first one isn't labeled as a phonies tape unless you dig real deep into the liner notes. But uh, anyway, it was licensed to Radio Shack in 1983, though some of the recordings date as far back as 77. And uh, this one is rather amusingly labeled as Comedy Edition. As in, these are all supposed to be humorous not necessarily impressions of comedians. Which is kind of funny in and of itself, given that the whole point of phonies was to be humorous. But uh, anyway, uh, hang on to your sides, kids. You know, to keep them from splitting. Thanks for buying Radio Shack's outgoing messages. We're sure you'll enjoy using them as much as we enjoy doing them for you. The voices on this tape have been specially prepared to get you more messages. And now here's how to use them to your best advantage. First, using any standard cassette player, listen to the Radio Shack outgoing messages and then choose one. Notice that three seconds before each voice, there is a cueing chime. The chime indicates that you have three seconds before Radio Shack's outgoing message starts. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Radio Shack's Outgoing Messages. Well, I'm not here now. I'm in Philadelphia, enticing small dogs and children into precarious situations. So I'll leave your name, your number, and alcoholic preference. Thank you very much, Anthony. Well, Gracie, what do you think of the new answering machine? Oh, George, it's wonderful, but it doesn't work. It uh, doesn't work. I've talked for hours to that thing, but it never once answered me back. I think it's a very rude machine, George. You've got a point. Uh, say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. And you, leave your message when you hear the beep. Oh, it's so nice of you to call. My friends are detained in the laboratory. But after I'm through with my experiments, if you leave your name and number, I'll have them return your call. Although they might sound different. Well, you certainly got a lot of noise. Who gave you this number? Never mind that. I'm not talking to you. And you're not talking to me. This is a machine talking. And for all I know, you may be a kumquat. So wait for the tone and say to seek a void. You may win a hundred dollars. Good evening. This is your old friend, Alfred. Don't hang up. Leave your name and number 
and will return your call after this brief interruption. One, you just know it. It's always something. You call a person and you get a machine. I mean, it's absolutely disgusting. A machine that'll record your voice. What's next? I'll tell you what's next. The beep. Well, I guess it wouldn't be phonies without a visit from my old arch nemesis, Rich Little. You know, the guy who's been milking his George Burns impression since Gracie Allen was still alive. You know, the man of a thousand voices, 997 of which he has to drop in some explicit references to the person, if not outright name the person he's impersonating because, let's face it, you'd never pick it out otherwise. But uh, anyway, on a friendlier note, once again, we also have Julie Dees in tow, uh, a.k.a. Mrs. Rick Dees, the disc jockey. And uh, once again, she rather appropriately looks like a deer in the headlights. But anyway, we've got volume eight here today, and there's no date listed on the tape, but I think we can safely say that this is from 1984, uh, maybe 85, and uh, we're actually getting some more contemporary voices here. Uh, we got a Cindy Lauper impression in here. But of course, this being a rich little thing, who hasn't updated his act since the Carter administration, there's some voices and some lines within these bits that, even back in 1984, were a bit outdated. And there's also one or two lines in here that, even back then, were total head-scratchers. Well, this is the president coming into your home any way I know how. You know the government that robs Peter to pay Paul can always depend on the support of Paul. It's what's known as the Peter Principle. That's why I am sure I can depend on you. So leave your name and number at the tone. Boy, you picked a bad time to call. We're breaking out of this dump, see? So leave your name and the number of the prisoner you're calling, and who's ever left will get back to you. Here they come, Jocko. Hand me that grapefruit. to talk about good phone. Many, many people have premature hang-ups. Electronic devices are no substitute for the real thing, but they can be very stimulating. <laughs> yes. So relax, wait for the beep, and enjoy it. Howdy. Boy, you people picked a bad time to call because there's nobody available. Mr. Deeds went to town to meet John Doe, and Sergeant York won't be back until high noon. So you'll have to leave a message on your own. This is Alexis, and whatever Alexis wants, Alexis gets. Like this diamond-studded answering machine, I like making love to a man and then turning him into a penniless ruin. I've ruined more men than loose bicycle seats. And if you leave your name and number, maybe you'll get lucky and I'll ruin you too. Smile, though my heart is aching. Smile, where's Menachem begging? <laughs> Don't get excited, it's only me. I'd like to tell you about my accomplishments as president. Have you got a second? <laughs> well, while I'm thinking about it, why don't you leave your message at the tone? Oh, girls just want to have fun. At heart, I'm a rock and roller. It's very deep and mental. It's mind-boggling. If you boggle your mind, you got to unboggle it. 
So leave a message at the... <laughs> and that's the end of this volume of Rich Little Phonies. If you have ideas for future phonies that you'd like us to hear, send them to Phonies, Box 2110, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08003. And say the secret word and you may win $100. That's right. If we use it, we'll send you something special. Maybe Linda Carter? Well, not that special. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join me next time when I figure out how to start folding Spiro Agnew into my act. Hey, I'm hip. Oh, can we talk? I'm sleeping here with your friends. Oh, grow up. We have a mature relationship. Besides, the waterbed in this house is like the Dead Sea. Yes, yes. The only thing you can turn on around here is this machine. Oh, give me a break and leave a message at the beep. Oh, please, it's so sad. It's not the message in your life that counts. It's the life in your message. Oh.